Isaiah 59, let's start there. Isaiah 59, the very first verse in the New Living Translation, it says this, listen, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is his ear too deaf to hear you call. The hand of the Lord is not short. He won't come up short. There's no limitations when it comes to God. And like you heard Keisha said, praying for so many years that God is always an untimed God. Grandma used to say, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. So no matter what the challenges of life may be, don't let them overwhelm you to the point of you losing hope in God's control over your future. Regardless of how you feel, don't ever lose hope over what God can do in your future. Never underestimate the power of God's word, especially as a believer of Jesus Christ. The word of God has power within it to deliver you and to bless your life. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, the word of God is alive and powerful. Let me say it again. The word of God is alive and it is powerful. So please understand that the word of God is potent, meaning it has the power to perform whatever God desires. Whatever he desires, the word is going to perform it. So you have to begin to ask yourself the question, what do you want God to do in your life? I mean, if you're reading his word, I'm not talking about just listening to a pastor or listen to somebody tell you what God said. If you take up the Bible yourself and begin to read it and ask the Holy Spirit to uh, reveal God's will to you, I promise you, you will find that the word of God is literally powerful. It's alive, it's active, and it can do great things in your life. Isaiah 55, verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, God speaking. It shall not return to me empty, it says. It won't return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the things for which I sent it. Now that's a mouthful by itself. It says the word of God that goes out of God's mouth, it's not going to return empty or unaccomplished. So when God spoke blessings over your life, what God is saying that those words will not come back to him void or empty. But the devil will want you to think that, you know, whatever God promised you will never come to pass. Why? Because we're anxious. And the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. So when, when, when God promised you healing, right, and, and you pray today and you don't get it by Monday morning and you start concluding that God didn't listen or maybe he's, he doesn't exist or maybe he doesn't care about you, when, 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 when that's not true, Right? If he says he's going to heal you, he's going to heal you according to his timetable. And you have to understand that that word healing, once he speaks that word and he says you're healed, you're healed. Now it may take five years, it may take two years, but if you hold on to the word of God, because I promise you, God cannot lie. He cannot lie. And understanding your rights and privileges as a believer empowers you to trust God for all his promises without doubt and hesitation. I have to submit to you, so many of you in this room and those of you who are streaming, you are living your life in doubt and hesitation. You're, you're, you're kind of hesitant. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know if God's going to do it for me. I'm not quite sure things are going to work out in my favor. Many of you are doubting at your age that you will ever see the goodness of the Lord in your life. 
You're doubting that you will ever come out of whatever situations that you find yourself in. You're doubting that that generational curse will be broken over your family. You're doubting that your son, your daughter, who has walked away from the will of God and live in a life that is displeasing to God, you're doubting that God can save your child. Why? Because you've seen that kid do so many things that have broken your heart and you have rendered that child hopeless. When all God wants you to do is to have faith and no matter what, keep believing, keep believing, keep believing, keep believing. As long as you have breath in your body, keep believing that God is a way maker. So I want you to know that believing in God's faithfulness to fulfill every one of his promises can radically transform your life in a positive way. That every day you wake up and you tell yourself, God's favor is on my life. That if God be for me, who can be against me? That I'm coming out of that situation. You know what your problems are. That you're coming out of that situation. You got to believe, you got to believe, you got to believe. You got to separate yourself from negative people, negative environments, and you got to retrain your mind to think that there's nothing impossible with God. The God that you serve can do the impossible. So in this season of your life, you have to make some choices. You do have choices to make. That's what the Lord sent me here to tell you. You do have choices to make in this season of your life. You can no longer sit back in a passive way and saying, okay, you know, whatever. No, you have choices to make today, right? You have to choose to believe or to live in fear and doubt. It's up to you. Choose to believe. So I want to talk to you about the subject today, believe big, big. Now some of you are scared just to hear the word big because all of what's in your head, it's limitations and, 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 and what the devil wants you to think that, that you can't come out of the box that he has built to hold you hostage to his plans. But I'm telling you, the God that you serve is big and great, all powerful, and it's time you believe big. Somebody shout big. big. Come on, one more time, big. big and then make that confession, I believe big. big. You've got to believe that. This is not a sermon to excite you and to motivate you. You've got to live this every day. Believe big. I don't care what your impossible situation is right now. Believe big. Believe that before the end of this year, God will give you a significant opportunity that would radically change your life. If you're living in the bottom, believe that by December 31st, God will bring you from the bottom to the top. Yeah. Believe that if your family members have walked away from the will of God, you ought to believe big that every one of your family members will become a Christian. You ought to believe big, man. That promotion that you're looking for, you got to believe. I don't care if you're not qualified. I don't care if you don't fit the profile. You got to believe. If God says that promotion is yours, then you ought to believe big. Come on now. Now, some of you are going to love this, man. If you believe in God for a spouse and so forth, you just stay in your lane, do your right thing and serve God, but believe big that somewhere along the line, God's got your spouse. I don't care if God's got to move him from Korea to bring him to the United States. You ought to believe big that if God's got a spouse for you, you don't have to settle for no little thing that the devil will throw in your face. Believe big. You got to believe that this is your moment, that this is your season. So you got to believe but don't fear or doubt. You have to make the choice to choose to trust God for forgiveness and a bright future. Or you can dwell in self-pity, condemnation, fear, and uncertainty. You can say, God, you know, I trust you. I made a lot of mistakes. I've walked out of your will. 
and I ask you to forgive me. That's all. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. You can choose to do that. And then enter into the, the kingdom of God as a kingdom citizens, a citizen I should say, and allow the word of God to bear fruit in your life or you can dwell in self-pity. Poor me. You know, things will never turn in my favor. I've committed too many sins. I've done, done too many bad things. So God can never forgive me. You know, you can dwell in that. You can condemn yourself. In fact, the word of God says there's no condemnation to those who believe. If you believe, you're not condemned. And you can choose, listen, you can choose to say, God, I know over the years I've made some stupid, dumb decisions. If you're a man, you choose to believe this morning that God, I made some bad decisions in my life. Mad, bad decisions. I got with the wrong crowd. I got arrested. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. Smoking, drinking, going out, doing all kinds of stuff. I'm living, God, I've done all of those things, right? I've got a lot of baby mamas around town. I have children I'm not supporting. I've cussed, I've done all kinds of stuff. Maybe you've murdered somebody and they don't even know about it. I don't care what you have done. You got to believe that even with all of those things, that I am forgiven. You got to believe that. As a woman, you got to believe that no matter the mistakes you've made in your life, that once you've asked God to forgive you, you got to believe that there's hope for you. Don't condemn yourself. Don't allow yourself to believe the lies of the devil that you are hopeless that God doesn't love you, that you can't go to church, you can't serve God. I understand that sometimes church people can act funny and we can act crazy and we'll condemn you and we don't want you in the building because you're too bloody, you're too messy and so forth. But when it comes to God, you have to understand this. If you believe that you are forgiven, when it comes to God, nobody in the building owns the building. Nobody in the building, come on now, have a heaven or a hell to put you in. Once you know you're connected to God the Father, that's all that matters. Come on now. So you have to choose to believe that you are forgiven and don't condemn yourself. Don't, don't bathe yourself in fear and self-pity and worry about what your future is going to be. While you're sitting in this room or streaming today and you're worried about your bills and worried about your children and worried about your spouse and worried about your job and worried about your money, the God that sits high and looks low is not worried at all. He says the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. And he says, I shall supply your every need. I love what David said. I'm young, old, I've never, ever seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. As a believer, God will not stand by and let you beg for bread. He'll provide for you every single time. Would you look at somebody and tell them God will make a way every time? He'll make a way every time. I don't care how your back is against the wall. He'll always make a way. Ask me how I know that. Oh, honey, let me tell you something. How much time do you have? How much time do you have? When my back was against the wall, he's always been there for me. Do I have anybody in the room to testify he'll always make a way he'll always make a way the third choice you have is to believe God's kingdom has everything you need to live a life that reflects a child of God or you can believe my friends the lies of the devil 
that says the word of God is not enough. It's not enough for you. And that's the lie some of you are believing. The word of God is not enough. But you got to have more to it. And before you have to believe for big things or settle for the average or settle for what the systems of the world and the people say you should and should not have. If you're not careful, the system of the world will tell you what you shouldn't have or what you should have. They'll tell you as a Christian, you really are supposed to be humble to the point where you become a pauper, a beggar. They'll tell you as a Christian that you shouldn't really have nice stuff. And I get it, sometimes we need to be careful. We never use wealth or money or status, watch this, to brag. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. So that's why when you get your car, your house, your land, your job, your career, or you dress nice, never use that to broadcast it that you're better than people. Never use it, right, to brag and to show off, as people will say. That's not the purpose of your blessings. Right? Your purpose of your blessing is to prove to others that the same God who did it for you can do it for them. He's no respect of persons. Right? We need to grow to the level where when you see people wearing nice clothes, when you see people driving nice cars, when you see people living good, decent homes and look like they got a little bit of money, don't get jealous over them. Right? Don't, don't even worry. You don't even know how they're paying for it. Because half the people who look rich and half the people who talk rich, they're not rich. So be careful how you're wasting time arguing with people. But when God blesses you with something, don't be afraid of it. Don't hide it. Don't be ashamed of it. As long as you're not flaunting it in front of people. Come on now. Because when God blesses you, he, listen, if you study the word of God and see how God was blessing people, come on now. So your job as a believer is to believe God for big things and don't just settle for average. When you tell yourself, I am a child of God and he's going to take care of my every need, so he's going to supply it, so just, just trust him. And as he's blessing you, embrace it. So I'm telling you today that God's ways surpass human understanding and it's time for you to break free from societal limitations and negative influences. Just break free from it. One of the things you must understand, people are always going to talk. Dream big. People are always going to talk. Dream big. The moment, listen, you really want to know your true friends? You really want to know if people are really with you? You start talking big stuff around them. You, listen, you start telling your family what you're going to do. You start telling your family, God's going to do this for you. You're trusting God for this. And you, 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 start, you start letting your family see the blessings around your life and see what they're going to do to you, just like Joseph. When his own blood brothers saw that his father favored him in such a way that his daddy gave him this jacket, this special jacket. The Bible says his brothers hated him. Every time God's going to promote you and do great things in your life, you'll be shocked at the people who will plot against you. They hated him. Joseph never asked for the blessing. He never asked his daddy to favor him. He never asked his daddy to give him a special jacket. He never asked God. He never prayed to become prime minister. He never prayed to be elevated. He never prayed for it. Some of you need to understand the blessings that's over your life and the favor that's over your life. You never asked for it. God just decided to bless you. Oh my God, I'm feeling this. He just decided to bless you. And if he decides to bless you, then embrace it. In spite of who's fighting against you. So today I'm challenging you to take a leap of faith, man. 
embrace the endless possibilities God has in store for you. I don't care what you got to fight through. Embrace the endless possibilities. Take a leap of faith, my friends. Take that leap of faith. Take it. I'm challenging you today. Take that leap of faith and dream big. Believe big. Do it today. Isaiah 59 verse 1 reminds us that the Lord's hand is not too weak. It's not weak to save you. So what situation are you in today? Huh? What, what, what situation you find yourself in today? Young man, could I use you for a second? Come here. Come here, sir. Come here, sir. Come right here. Just stand right there. Look at me. Look at, turn around to me. Give me your hand. What situation do you find yourself in? What pit do you feel you're down in and you can't get out of? Let me tell you something. God, whew, thank you, Lord. God is not going to leave the splendor of his domain and stoop low to come down to live where you live. I have to preach to some of you because you want God to come hang out at negativity, doubt, fear, all kinds of unproductive stuff. Your life is jacked up and you're praying for God to come live with you, for God to come assist you paying rent in unproductive places. When the scripture is saying, the hand of the Lord is not short, turn around to me, sir, that his hands is strong enough to save you. Now watch this now. Some of you feel in the hand of God, but your problem is you're not helping yourself. If you want God to help you, when he sends his word like he's doing today to pull you out, you got to help yourself. That's my point. That's my point. You got to help yourself. I'm trying to help you up. You got to figure a way to get up here. Thank you. Thank you. That's my point. I'm trying to help the brother up. And that's exactly what we do. God says, my hand, it's not short. It's there to save you. But like the young man, what was he waiting for? Here's my question to you. What are you waiting for? Would you look at your neighbor and say, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for to dream big and to believe God for the unthinkable? And he's not deaf, he's hearing you. This is suggesting that as believers at times, we will pray for things and even ask God to respond urgently. And it will seem like he's silent to our request. But I want you to rest assured that he's not deaf to your cries. So don't let the challenges of life dampen your dreams or hinder your belief to believe God for greater things. So I want to challenge you today to elevate, elevate your surroundings, ensuring that they foster God's word and encourage you. Elevate your surrounding. Listen to me, young lady. Now is not the time to have people in your life that's not pushing you forward. Are you hearing me? Sir, this is not the time for you to have people who are pulling you down. This is not the time. I have concluded that some people really don't want to step up. Some people don't want to be elevated. 
Some people are comfortable with average, comfortable living down beneath their privileges. But as a child of God, you got to learn to tell yourself, I am better than that. I am here for greater reasons. I can no longer stay there. I got to step up. Somebody say, step up. Step up. You got to step up, man. So don't you ever allow the circumstances of life to keep you down. It's time to elevate yourself and encourage yourself to be fully committed to God, number one. Number two, to speak uh, uh, words of faith instead of words of fear and doubt. And number three, to embrace every significant opportunity that God presents to you. Like now. Like now, you have an opportunity of a lifetime to believe big, to believe big that 12 months from now, you will have a testimony. You went to church on March 10th, 2024, and you heard a message, believe big, and you challenge yourself to do it. And 12 months later, you're at a better place. God did it for you. did it for you. So I strongly believe that God is leading you into a new season of clear thinking that requires believing for big things. Clear thinking. Some of you, your minds are too cloudy. Oh God, it's too cloudy. You got too much noise around you. The clutter is controlling your ability to dream big. But it's time you move forward. It's time you believe God. You see, he desires for you to align your mind with his will so that in the upcoming phase, watch this, of your life, you will be operating within his perfect plan. The next phase of your life, he wants you to operate in his perfect plan. And trust me, when you're in his perfect plan, you're blessed. You lack nothing. When you're in the plan of God, you lack nothing. And God wants you to operate in his perfect plan. And you operating in his perfect plan will cause you to be fulfilled or to fulfill, I should say, every significant task he has empowered you to undertake. When you're in his perfect will, you are able to fulfill every significant task he has assigned to you everything, everything that you will no longer say, I can't do this. No, yes, you can. You can do it. Why? Because you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. And I'm telling you, there's greater yet to come in your life. Sitting in this room, people watching around the world, I'm telling you, there's an anointing to perform on your life. I would hate to know that you live your life in a passive way every single day and miss your God moment to be that man that God has called you to be. Whatever he has put on the inside of you, I hope you don't die not fulfilling that dream, not fulfilling his purpose over your life. I would hate to know that as a woman that he's placed purpose in you and you just live throughout life, empty, not fulfilling your purpose on the earth. So I'm asking you today, I'm asking you today with conviction that it's time you start believing God for big things. He's not afraid of you. He's not afraid of you, man, asking for things that would put him to the test. He's not afraid. I've been serving him for a long time now. And let me tell you something. If he puts something in the book, I'm going to challenge him. Because he's God. See, some people I don't trust. If they tell you walk, I'm running. <laughs> do you know people like that? But if God put it in the book, say he's going to do certain things, and I must test him, I must challenge him, you think I'm, no, I'm not going to play around because I want everything that he has for me. And by the way, God does not have character flaws. He doesn't. 
Therefore, he doesn't make promises. He is incapable of fulfilling. So it's time for you to see and understand the magnitude of God's power in the capabilities he has instilled in you. You're capable of doing whatever. You're capable of being a man. Be a man. You're capable of being a woman. Be a woman. You are capable, watch this, of figuring out that woman. The Bible says when you're dealing with a woman, deal with her according to knowledge, not your feelings. She will drive you crazy if you deal with her with your feelings. You will never understand the emotions of a woman as a man. Never, never, never. And all the brothers say, <laughs> You the one going home with her today, not me. <laughs> you don't have to say everything I tell you to say. <laughs> but it's true. But when you go to God, man, He'll put everything in you that you need in order to go through life. So quit delaying your blessings. Quit delaying your blessings, man. And for heaven's sake, stop it. Stop imposing limits on yourself due to fear and taking leaps of faith, man. Step out of your comfort zone and walk into areas that will put your faith to the test. Walk into areas that will put your faith to the test. Put God to the test. He's not scared of you challenging him. Either he's a liar or he's true. Put him to the test. You want healing in your body? Put him to the test. You say, God, I'm going through this sickness. And I went to church and I heard this preacher talk about putting you to the test. And you know what? All right, the doctor said so and so. So God, but God, I'm, I, I believe you, I'm healed. I'm going to stand on the scriptures that reminds me that by your stripes I am healed. That healing belongs to me. So God, I, I claim it now. I remember that woman in the Bible when she was hemorrhaging and there was no way out. You healed her. Okay, God. There were some people who were crippled. You healed them. Right? So, God, I, I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. Blind. People could not see. And if you did it for them, I'm, I'm listen, listen, I'm just going to put you to the test. I'm going to put you to the test. I'm going to challenge you today, God. I believe you for my healing. I'm not going to get frustrated if it doesn't happen by next week, but God, I'm going to believe you that you're going to heal me. You know why? Because other people are testifying that you heal them. And if you said in your word, you're no respecter of persons, then what's up, God? I'm going to trust you. Just like yours truly here, I trust God. I trust him for healing my body. When years ago, when doctors told me I had a very severe back pain, it was horrible. I did not want my enemies to even experience what I was experiencing. I mean, a severe back pain. And doctors told me that I had to do surgery and uh, the chance of the, the surgery being successful was very slim. He, he said, just prepare yourself. You, you're going to be crippled. That's what they told me. And I'm not saying, you know, God special, you know, uh, chose me as somebody special over others. No, he, they told me you're not going to walk eventually. But you see, I'm like, okay, wait a minute now. I'm not confused here. When my mom was pregnant with me, it was a preacher, a bishop who went to her. And back in 1964, they didn't have all these technology and stuff, sonogram, you're going to know if it's a boy or a girl when the baby is pushed out. 
And in 1964, that preacher looked at my mom and said, you're carrying a boy and he's going to be a preacher. 1964, he's going to be a preacher and he's going to be preaching the gospel. And my mom would tell me, she gave me over to the Lord. No, as, as crazy as I was acting, that's why you parents listen to me. When you give your children over to God, I don't care what they do. You just pray over them. <laughs> They'll be prodigals, but they're going to come home. Somebody's kid is coming home, man. And I'll never forget, I trusted God. And when the doctors told me that, I said, now, wait a minute. Now, God, you told my mama that I was going to be a preacher. Now, I don't know, maybe you want me to go around in a wheelchair preaching. That's okay, nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to hold on to your promises. You told me what I would do. You told me I was going to travel the world to preach the gospel, and I have. You told me I was going to build this church and everything like that. And I said, no, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm not going to argue with you. But God, I refuse to take anything that doesn't belong to me. And I'll never forget, I did my part. I'm not telling you not to do your part. I went to the hospital the day of the surgery. I'll never forget it, Imperial Point Medical Center. The day of the surgery, they went there, well, as we got there, just before they put the, uh, the anesthesiologist came just to put me to sleep. I heard the word from God. I'll never forget it. Like some of you right now, you're hearing God speak to you. I laid in that bed and when that, person was in, about to put it in me. I heard God said to me, you're healed. When I heard that, well, you know, back in them days, I wasn't as dignified as I am now, you know. I'm kind of little polished a little bit and so forth, you know. I was old school Pentecostal, you know. And when I heard that, I jumped up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, you know, in the hospital, they know he is now nuts. He's crazy. Everybody's worried about it. What just happened? And I mean, they were looking at me like, you are crazy. I said, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm just shouting. I'm healed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I mean, I'm going crazy in the hospital. And the doctors say, look, we don't have time for this, you know. But seriously. We got plenty of surgeries to do today. I said, doctor, you don't understand this, but listen to me, do me a favor. Would you take another x-ray? And they did, oh, we don't have time for this. I said, I don't care, I'll pay for it. I know, I know what you're gonna say to insurance companies. I said, I will pay for it. I just sense in my spirit that I am healed. I finally convinced them. And they took me in the x-ray room and all of a sudden they turn in me all kinds of ways and taking pictures and everything like that. And finally, when the doctor came, they sent me back to the room. And when the doctor came in the room, he was kind of puzzled and, and he said, come here, sir, come here. And he brought me outside and they had this big picture where, you know, uh, the lights where they put the x-rays on. And he showed me, he said, this was your x-ray that we took before. And you see right there where your spine was, that's the thing we saw there that was pushing against your spinal cords, that was really giving you the severe pain, and that's what we were going to try to delicately reach and to cut out of your back. But now when we look at this, the latest x-rays, we can't find anything. He said these words to me, sir, just put on your clothes and you can go home. It reminds me of in the scripture when Jesus said to the man, take up your bed. And I believe somebody here today is about to take up your bed, take up your grave clothes and you're about to walk in the promises of God. Are you hearing me today? left that hospital over 30 years now. I'm still walking. Never had that pain ever again. I'm telling you, if you dare to believe big, God will do it for you. Somebody ought to give them praise in the house this morning. Let me quickly wrap this up. 
So it's unfortunate that you have traded a life of faith for one that is filled with fear, hopelessness, and self-imposed limitations. Please stop it. Please stop talking about faith, man. And just do it. Just live it. The year is eagerly anticipating the manifestation of God's power in every aspect of your life. This year is filled with opportunities. Please don't sit there every week and come to church and sit in your seat or stream and every week you come in expecting and leave with nothing. Don't close 2024 and say to yourself, you got nothing out of it. You got to come out with something. This year has to be different. Who am I preaching to? 2024 has to be different. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither have it entered into the hearts. What God has in store for you this year. Make this year count. Stop wasting time. The world is waiting for you, for the church to rise to its full potential and to live what's written in the Bible. God is waiting for you to do that. So I pray that your passion will drive you towards experiencing God's presence and blessings in abundance, my friends. And I must be honest with you that the path you're taking, some of you at least, will not even get you close to what God wanted for you. Please change your direction. Please change from living in doubt and fear. Please stop hanging on the fence, not experiencing the goodness of God because you're not dreaming and believing big. So today, begin to truly believe that God loves you unconditionally. He desires for you to willingly surrender your life to him and for you to embody his teachings in every aspect of your existence. Live out loud every day. Live out loud every day. Some of you are running out of time. Live out loud every day, showcasing the greatness of God as this is the most compelling, the most compelling way for unbelievers to witness the power of your faith. In conclusion, I urge you to join me and believe with me for significant outcomes this year. I'm serious about this, man. I want you to join me in believing that this year is going to be different. It's going to be different. It has to be different. It has to be different. So allow me to propose a few areas where, as a church, we can collectively put our faith in God for big things. Are you ready for this? And I'm out of your way. This is what I want you to help me with, and I want all of us to believe God for. Number one, I want you to believe big for a massive recruitment of our families and friends to become disciples of Christ. Now, the way you're clapping, I'm quite sure if I said for more money, you would have clapped much better than that. Let me say it one more time. I want you to believe for a massive recruitment of our families and friends to become disciples of Christ. That they're going to come home. That they're going to come and give their lives to Christ. Number two, I want you to believe God for a renewed passion to volunteer in ministry. That many of you were sitting down week after week. You've got talents that you no longer feel comfortable sitting down in the pews. But you'll volunteer. You'll be more committed to physical church attendance that you will increase your financial support to the ministry, that we'll dream big. Can you imagine if we ever dream to be like the church of the Bible where people are so committed 
that they'll go, we'll break bread together, we'll fellowship, we'll have one-on-one -on -one evangelism, and watch this, we'll share things that will have everything in common, watch this, and nobody in the kingdom of God will go in want. Do you know how many people sitting in this room today don't even know where their next meal is coming from? I know it sounds weird, because as a church, we've become so comfortable that when God blesses us, we put up all these walls in our lives that we care no more about the poor. We care no more about our brothers and sisters who are in the building, who are hurting somebody in this room today, don't even have gas money to go home with. They're hurting financially. And can you imagine if we dream big that this church will have enough resources in it because every one of us do our part, give unto God that when there's ever a need with any one of kingdom citizens that those needs would be met. Dream with me, number three. I want you to believe God big for me and big with me for the manifestation of miracles. You heard three miracles here today. But, but what, what if we can get the miracle from the stage out there into the pews? What if we walk in here next week and somebody say, let me tell you something what the Lord did for me. Oh, he did it for you too? Let me tell you what the Lord did for me. Oh, you too? Oh yeah, let me tell you what he did. And all of a sudden like wildfire, miracles, 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 miracles. Believe big with me. Number four, number four. You're going to love this. Number four, I want you to believe big with me that singles in the kingdom of God will find their godly partners. Come on now. If you're believing God for a partner, can you believe with me that some the line. God's got your woman available. God's got your Ruth. God's got your Boaz. Can somebody believe God with me that your spouse is in the kingdom of God? Number four, I want you to believe big with me. Or number five, I want you to believe big with me for healthy and thriving marriages. Come on now. Healthy, thriving marriages that if your marriage is on the verge of just a collapse, a total collapse, that both parties will see themselves. Not just one person seeing themselves, because it takes two to make a marriage work. You cannot have a healthy marriage when one is crazy and the other is not. When one wants it and the other doesn't want it. Come on now. Two has to come to where the cross is and say, Lord, I surrender my will to you. Let thy will be done. Come on now, are you hearing me? And number six, I want you to believe God with me, that kingdom citizens, for kingdom citizens, for kingdom citizens to strategically influence and excel in the realms of politics, business, healthcare, education, and finance. Think big with me that in the kingdom of God, I'm close, in the kingdom of God, that God will raise some of you up to be politicians because the call is already on your life, but you're scared. If we keep allowing some of those people to run for politics, and keep winning, then please stop complaining. Because they are, watch this, they are of another agenda. And I don't care, listen, you can speak in tongues all you want, you can shout all you want, but if you don't get involved in the political process, and I know what some of you are thinking. Well, they're going to do whatever they want to do anyway and so far they don't care, you know, and I'm, I'm just not going to vote and whatever. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. I am an immigrant. I was not born here. But when I read the history of what black folks had to go through, 
to get all of us where we are today, you ought to be ashamed when you sit down and you allow the system to continue the way it is and you did not participate, something is wrong with that. Something is wrong with that. Especially for those of you who are born here. For you to sit back, I'm not voting. I'm not, something's wrong with that. You get in politics so that the people who have a God conscious mind will get in there. That's how we gonna change it. Oh, I know you're silent with me now. That you get involved in business. How many are business owners? Can you imagine that? I want your business to grow big, man. Why is it other people who don't even believe in God on a Sunday morning, they're playing golf today? Watch this, come on. They're playing golf today. They're on the beach. They're on their yacht. They're doing all kinds of stuff. And we call them heathens. We call them devils. But you in church, you serve this wonderful and amazing God. And you telling me that you're serving God and you're struggling to the point, you can't, you live in Fort Lauderdale. The beach is just a few miles east. And you can't even go look at the ocean because you're strapped in debt, in depression. Didn't the Bible say that he reigns on the just? Sometimes the unjust people got more faith. Because they'll step out and take risk. We'll take, we'll mortgage their house to start a business. But we like, we pray and fasting for 30 days when you have the resources to do it. You to have faith, man, for your business to be big. Healthcare, get in the healthcare system. Those of you who are nurses and doctors and technicians, we're praying for you. But you could be the next person to invent a medicine that could cure this world. Without you, we couldn't do it, man. I don't care how safe you are and sanctified and you have faith. You got to take medicine at times. We need you. Let's believe big that, watch this, just like the Catholic Church, they own several hospitals, several hospitals that we go to. What happened to us? The kingdom. I know you don't like this kind of preaching, but because we, we don't own no hospital. the healthcare system, the financial institution. Do you not know that the system is rigged in such a way that even certain companies, certain companies were sued and had to pay billions of dollars because one company, I'm not, you probably know the name, one financial institution was willfully denying blacks loans. The financial loan officer will put a code on every application when you're black. But I'm believing big that we're going to take over. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but bow your heads with me. I got to get you out of here. I got to get you out of here. If this message challenged you this morning, it did. And you just feel that God is pushing you into something big. I know you're scared. I know, I know you're scared. But if you believe that this is your once in a lifetime opportunity to believe big, and you will not end today 
without taking a step of faith to make that declaration to believe for big things. If that's you, would you stand? Wherever you are, just stand. Pastor, you challenged me today to stop thinking small. I knew it was gonna be a lot of you and, and there's no way I could get all of you down here. So I want you to stand. Now do me a favor, would you look around the room? Look around the room, look how many people are standing. Look how many people. Now listen to me. Can you imagine if all of you were standing, would ever truly dare to believe big? Can you imagine what will happen? Can you really imagine? Stop talking defeat. Stop thinking defeat. And I want you to dream. Get your dream back. Don't be scared anymore. The stuff that you said you wanted to do, do it. Take baby steps of faith and just do it. And watch what God will do in your life if you're believing for healing. Just believe. You're believing for restoration. Believe. If you're believing for finances to come in your life, just believe. And watch what God will do in your life. Dream big. Jonathan, would you just come and let the Lord lead you as I pray and we do the closing song. Father, lift your hands, everybody. Thank you. Ah. Thank you that you've challenged us today to dream big. I pray for people with businesses. Somebody was planning to close their business down, but you brought them to church today to let them know, no, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. They just got to keep trusting you. Their time will come, their season will come. Somebody's dealing with some healthcare issues, Father, help them to understand they can, they, they can succeed in that area, whether it's healing, whether it's passing that nursing exam, whether it is passing that, that, that exam to become, to be entered into med school, whatever it may be, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that they'll continue to dream big. I pray for those, God, who are believing to pursue and go after a particular degree that God, in the name of Jesus, that they can have it, God. I pray even for churches around the country, not just the Faith Center, but we'll step up and rise up to the occasion. We'll open our own schools to educate our children, God so that we can do this, the resources can be there so we can do this, so we'll influence the next generation to have a fear of God and don't have to fall victim under this umbrella of the separation of church and state. God, I pray in the name of Jesus for the finances of your people. I pray that they'll believe you for big things, that if it's their season for a home, they'll have it. If, there's, if it's their season to cancel their mortgage debt, that it will take place. If they need the down payment to purchase that house, let them think big today, I pray. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for those who feel the call to go into politics, that they will do it. If you've called them, you'll sustain them so that they can change our local governments. They can change at the federal level, at the state level. May your blessings now fall upon every one of them. And Father, I give you praise, honor, and glory that this week would be an incredible week for us, that as we go, we return on Wednesday for our Bible study as we continue to talk about the fundamentals of our Christian faith, that your people will see the need to be at the place where they're informed, they're empowered to live according to your word. I bless your people today and I thank you that you've been with us this morning and you've challenged us to believe big in the name of Jesus, amen. Can we give God praise?